and do the best job that we can do of, uh, you know, stopping the opponent and being trying to be physical and playing fast and, you know, playing error free. So for us, it really doesn't change our approach. Ohio State uh, just happens to be the next opponent. We're going to go out and try to, you know, uh, meet our expectations and our standards of uh, playing Penn State defense. And that's being physical, playing fast, uh, being aggressive. So we're, we're just going to try to do what we normally do. Rich Garcella, Reading Eagle. Hi, John. Thanks for your time today. Uh, John, can you tell us what your initial impressions were of Jason Owe when you arrived at Penn State? How has he progressed and where is he now? Well, when I first took this job, you know, um, watching tape from last year on Jason, um, Jason was was very explosive, and you saw a big time athlete uh, just going out and making plays with his athleticism, and you know, he still was kind of raw in a couple technique things, and you know, I've seen Jason mature uh, from last season to this season because I feel like now you see more of the technique. I mean, his in my opinion, his strike is really good right now. Uh, he's doing a nice job getting off of blocks. And, you know, he does, he's been, he's really, really coachable guy. He wants to get better. Uh, he's doing a nice job with his hands and, you know, just understanding um, what, what sort of uh, pass sets that he's getting and, and how you want to attack that. And um, I've seen, I'm seeing his growth and maturity as a football and his knowledge increase and it is now translating to the football field. That's That's been fun to see so far as a coach after the first game. Tyler Donahue, Lions 247. John, uh, really glad to hear from you again. Uh, thanks for the time uh, this morning. <clears throat> Wanted to ask about two second-year players on your defensive front who we saw pretty extensively last Saturday. Hakeem Beeman inside and then Adiza Isaac on the perimeter, how have you seen each of those players progress? And uh, you know, where do you think their their biggest strides will be made forward? Um, you know, I'll, I'll start with um, Hakeem Beeman. Um, you know, Hakeem to me is, is an explosive guy inside. He does a, a really nice job with his hands. He plays with good leverage. Um, you know, again, he's a young guy. So it's been, it's been the fun to watch him as a coach just soak everything in that you that you tell him and you try to teach him and he's getting he's really getting better as a football player I mean this guy uh, he makes strides he's understand what we're asking him to do uh, he's doing a nice job understanding the package and uh, man it, it, it's showing up you know I felt like on Saturday uh, versus Indiana he did some really nice things for us and he, he was flashing all, all over the place so I like the way he's progressing I like the way he's learning um, his football IQ is growing uh, day by day and uh, I, I think I think this young man is, is, is going to have a high ceiling I really like what I see out of uh, Hakeem you know this week will be a good uh, be a really good test for him um, as far as Adisa Isaac um, I, I think Adisa it's, just, it's been fun to watch him just uh, increase his, his strength over the summer. And then the way you see him uh, striking and uh, playing blocks, he continues to get better there. Adisa is a really, really smart kid. And, um, you know, he, he's playing fast. There's, there's not a lot of thinking um, going on what we're doing on, doing on defense. And you see the guy playing fast. And uh, I really like his, his rush ability. He's got great hips and great feet. His first step is really, really, really good. Uh, and, and it's been an, an impressive to see him uh, just continue to uh, develop his pass rush moves and get really good with his hands. So um, I like how he's progressing. I'm really excited about those two. Greg Pickle, Penn Live. Thanks, Greg. And good morning, Coach. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm just curious, what can you guys do from a recruiting perspective this week? You can't host visitors. You don't have the whiteout, but it's still a huge week. Is there anything special you guys can do to build on that through a virtual setting? Um, you know, our, our recruiting department is doing some uh, some really cool stuff on game day uh, through Instagram and things like that. You know, and then from a football perspective, one of the best things you can do is just go out and play your tail off. And, and promote your product that way on how hard you play. Uh, you know, obviously uh, winning a game like this definitely helps you and things like that. But 
I, I think the way you play on the field uh, to me is, is, is one of the biggest um, things that you can do uh, nationally televised game. It's one of the biggest things you can do is go out and play well and play your tail off. So people see uh, the true brand and style of Penn State football. Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer. Uh, good morning, John. Um, good morning. I just wonder what your philosophy is on, on shuffling your defensive linemen. Uh, I wondered how that worked last week and how many deep do you uh, plan to go uh, like in a normal situation? Well, um, you know, I, I try to keep guys as fresh as possible. And, you know, so, you know, you try to roll, you, you, you try to have um, eight or nine guys that you feel really good about uh, that you can roll. And, you know, like last week, I think the rotation, um, a little bit was dictated by the, the uh, amount of plays that you also have too. I think, what was it? We had what, 20, 36 plays at the end of the third quarter or something like that, which is crazy. I don't know how many games I've been in like that. That's not a lot of plays. So I think that all goes into it. And then as a coach, you got to use your intuition on knowing when to put guys in at the right spot. So I, I think it's a lot that goes into it, but you like to, you know, have eight or nine guys that you can roll and feel really good about. Let's go to Travis Johnson with the Associated Press. Hey, Coach. Uh, Fields is, is pretty good at extending the play without outright having to take off and run. I, I'm just That's curious if – do you guys have a way – do you refer to those those steps he takes in the pocket? Do you refer – do you have, like, an internal stat to uh, refer to those steps that he takes to, um, you know, get outside and keep the play going? Um, and when does the objective maybe become limiting that space rather than, you know, outright getting to him if you can? Well, well, I, I'm going to say he's not pretty good extending plays. He's darn good extending plays. He's, he's one of the best I've seen do it. So in a while, but um, you know, what you try to do on that is you try to, you know, we, we talk about rush lane and having pocket integrity with our guys. You try to keep him bottled up in the pocket and the more you can get him off his spot, of where he's comfortable to set up and throw the ball, uh, I think the better your chances are as a defense. So we got to we got to try to do a good job with that of getting him off his spot, getting him un un uncomfortable, and then when he does get out, we got to do a great job with uh, corralling the guy and tackling him, and getting him down. And so you, uh, obviously we're going to try to limit that as much as we can. But he, I'll say that he is an elite athlete. So if he does get out, we got to do a great job rallying, continue to play, and get him down on the ground. But he. He, he will be a, uh, a handful. Mark Brennan, Lions 247. John, thank you for doing this today. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. I wanted to ask you about two other young guys who made the trip, but I, I don't think they got on the field. Uh, can you tell us how Smith Vilbert and Kaziah Izzard are coming along? Both guys seem like pretty impressive physical specimens. And as you get into games where you may see 80 snaps or something crazy like that, do you envision those guys maybe getting some playing time? Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, absolutely. You know, I, I really, I really think Kazai has got a, a, a big upside. He learns very quickly. He's, he's athletic. And uh, you know, he, he's one of those guys as this thing, you know, a, a normal game, you know, you would see those guys, um, you know, get, get some work in there, you know, um, with the right situation. Uh, in the game, but um, we really, we really feel uh, good about where Kazai is and how he's progressing, and we we feel good about his future. Same thing with Smith Bilber. I really like him. Uh, Smith is athletic. He's got great length, and you know he's continuing to to improve and get better every week. And you know he's another one of those young guys that you do want to get some work um, when the opportunity is you know opportunity is right and my thing is you know as crazy as it is this year with the COVID and all that kind of stuff going on these guys are going to have to be ready uh, you know I tell them all the time you gotta if you stay ready you don't have to get ready because at some point in time everybody's going to get their number call um, you know to to play significant time so we continue to bring those guys along but I'm very excited about both those young guys they're going to be really good. Let's go to Audrey Snyder with The Athletic. John, we've asked a lot of your defensive linemen about him. Um, most of us, I think, remember him as a player. But what's it like working with Deion Barnes? And what, what are some of the things that you see from him behind the scenes that we, of course, never will see? Um, you, you know, I tell you what, Deion Barnes, um, I, I've worked with a lot of, uh, you know, younger coaches as uh, coming up. And, and 
I tell you what, Deion Barnes is really, really good. Uh, he's just, you know, he's got a way with the guys that I think that's very good. Uh, but his knowledge of um, defensive end play and, and D-line play is really good. You know, I had, we've worked together for two years uh, at, with the Jets. And um, he, he understands how to pass rush like I do. So we, we see things very, very similar. And uh, we, we, were, we have a lot in common on how we see things and how we kind of coach things from the way he was coached in New York. And, and then, you know, kind of how he was, you know, he learned from Coach Johnson some things uh, that's now at Ohio State. I think he was his D-line coach when he got here. You know, I've, I've clinic with some of the people that are Coach Johnson disciples. So we're, we're, very, we're very aligned in kind of how we see things. And so he's, he's got a great way of just, um, you know, being that second voice uh, to those guys as I'm, I'm hitting them, he's also hitting them. And I, I think it's been really good. It's, it's been good to have him in there. Um, there's, a, there's a growing tw- uh, trust within our room uh, of guys believing in what we're doing. And then just his knowledge of, uh, you know, uh, and the way he sees things, it just it just complements everything we do in there, and that's been really really good. And those everybody is, has benefited from. But I've been very very excited about Coach Barnes, and his knowledge and his work ethic and the way uh, he conducts himself and handles himself and 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 you know relates to the guys has been outstanding. He's outstanding. He he is an outstanding young coach. He really is. Glad he's here. Let's go to uh, Tyler Donahue, Lions 247. John, no fault of your own, but the, the you kind of dealt a difficult hand with the recruiting because of coming on board in February and then having things get shut down a few weeks later. Um, how did that kind of impact your ability to, to, to establish some early momentum as a Penn State recruiter? How have you tried to work to overcome that with signing day coming up? And also, I'm going to throw this in there because I don't want the call to go by without mentioning him. Can you talk about the impact of Shaka Tony? on your room as the as the old guy and, and as a guy who's obviously effective on the field. Absolutely. Absolutely. So as far as the recruiting piece, uh, that was extremely difficult uh, just because, you know, a lot of these guys had been on campus and, and um, had met Coach Spence. And so I didn't actually get a chance to meet with these guys in person or get around those guys. And I think when you know, you guys know just as well as I do in the recruiting process, uh, when you go visit places, it's all about how you feel around that position coach, the Bob that you get like in person that you can't get on a Zoom or you can't get on, you know, just by mail. So that part of it has been difficult, but we've our recruiting staff has done a great job of trying to do different things to, to get us to, uh, to, so the recruits would see us in different ways. Um, you know, I've, I've also tried to reach uh, the guys we're on, I've also tried to reach every uh, kid, their parent, and just try to go over the top uh, with everything that I can, uh, I can legally do to, to build that relationship, you know, uh, just having multiple film sessions with guys, uh, articulating what we do, explaining kind of my coaching style, my uh, philosophy, philosophy. Um, also just trying to get those guys, you know, doing Zooms with them so they can see my family, so they can kind of just see what kind of person I am. And, uh, you know, it's taken a little bit of time, but I do find, I do feel like uh, the guys are seeing that because that's kind of the way it's going to be for a while. And I, I think it's, I think it's going to pay off uh, big time for us. So, you know, just, I just continue to work it the best way that we can uh, with that. And, uh, you know, but it, and, and again, I do feel like it'll all work out in the end how, how, it, how it's supposed to. So I just keep grinding that way. Our recruiting staff is doing a great job in helping us uh, with that. But, you know, that was difficult. That's, it's been, that's so different than my 18 years of, of being a college coach, of having to recruit kids with them never meeting you in person or coming on campus. But, uh, you know, you, you adapt and you overcome. And that's, that's what we're doing. We're adapting and overcoming and, and trying to do the best that we can. And then as far as Shaka Tony, it's been great having him around. Uh, Shaka's done a nice job of just uh, of leading guys and, and helping them understand all the little things that you need to know and the work that goes into having successful games. And, 
and being a student of the game. Those young guys in that room look up to him uh, because Chuck is a very, very intelligent football player. You know, he's one of those guys that can tell you what everybody's doing on the field, where they're going to be. Uh, he's been through a lot of battles and he's a great teammate to those guys. You know, he's one of those guys that'll go put it, put, put his, put his arm around them and love them up, but also, you know, um, you know, get on him when he needs to. And so having him in the room ha has been, has been awesome because he, he is, he is behind the coaching staff. He's behind us. Uh, he, he is, he is behind this football team doing everything that he can do to help make us be the best we can be. And so that's, that's been tremendous. It's always good when you have leadership like that uh, in your room and the guys are preaching the same message that the coaching staff is. All right, guys, we have one, we have time for one more question. Uh, New bias Wilborn, Pittsburgh post Gazette. Oh, geez. Um, I hate asking a non game question for the last question, but, <laughs> um, I'm doing a feature for next week and, um, just want to talk to you about your experiences with Alonzo Carter and what they have meant with getting to know coach Franklin and what that has done for black coaches. Say, say, say that again. Uh, um, the, the experience with Alonzo Carter with the, um, with the black coaches um, zooms over the summer okay. and, and with coach Franklin, just getting to know the staff in that way. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, you, you know, first of all, I, I think what Alonzo Carter is doing um, was wonderful because it brought it brought a lot of um, African American coaches together. Uh, you know, some of the some of the same coaches I hadn't seen or I hadn't talked to in years, but it allowed us to kind of brainstorm, and you know, on, on ideas that, of things that we can help help to um, you know improve our profession and and things that we can do moving forward. So I think that's been wonderful, uh, and everybody kind of getting on the same page. Uh, I think uh, I, I thank him for that. That's something that's been needed uh, for a while. So that was really good. And then, you know, um, working for Coach Franklin, who's an African-American coach, uh, has been has been great. You know, this is my second time working for an African-American head coach. Um, I did it when I was with the New York Jets and Todd Bowles was the head coach. So, you know, uh, I, I just think anything that we can do you know, as, as, a, as an African-American coach to, to help Coach Franklin, anything I can do or same with the help Coach Bowles to help promote them um, so people, you know, can see that, hey, man, we can, we can, we can go in and do a great job too. And, um, you know, we're, we're good coaches as well. I, I'm going to do that. But it's, it's been great, man. Coach Franklin, um, you, guys, you guys know him too, is, is one of the best leaders uh, white, black, whatever that I've, that I've been around. His leadership style is tremendous, man. And he's very effective in running an organization. And just, I, you know, I've been around a lot of coaches and I, you know, he, I, I think he, he's at that top of just being a great leader, man. And, you know, if you hadn't been around him or, or know the day to day, coach Franklin has got it, man. He's got that it factor. He's one of the smartest people I've ever been around. And so, I think working with him, I'm taking it all, soaking it all in. Uh, you know, one day, you, you know, you want to have an opportunity to run your own program, and what better guy to learn for, learn from than James Franklin? He, he is, he is really good at what he does. Really good, good person, good man. All right, thank you, Coach Scott, for joining us today, and appreciate everyone's time. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Thank you.